some of the remedies that we uh, made available to us. Well, I'm going to read out a prayer, a prayer that comes directly into this aspect of voiding and absolutely to what we are doing when we are in front of a court and absolutely to uh, challenging them at their heart. And it is a solemn prayer of atonement. It is a prayer of 42 words. It encompasses the understanding of voiding. It encompasses the fact that we are dealing with actors. It's encompassing the fact that when we go to court, we are appearing as, uh, as atonement. It's encompassing the fact that when we speak of mind, body, spirit, and we say the word we, we, under their system, are evoking a tribunal, mind, body, spirit. And remember that their roles, the plenipotentiary, the prothonotary, and the custodian are all claiming pieces of us. So if we go to court and use the word I or me, then I or me am, are playing their game in, in arguing that they can continue to do what they're doing because they're claiming parts of us. So we is a key. Now here's the prayer. I'm sorry for the background. We, the tribunal of mind, body and spirit, confess before Almighty God as our witness. We do not recognize you, pointing to the clerk. We do not recognize you, pointing to the judge. We do not recognize you, pointing to the prosecutor. And so, by the grace of God, we shall be forgiven. Amen. I'm going to repeat that again. We, the tribunal of mind, body and spirit, confess before Almighty God as our witness. We do not recognize you. We do not recognize you. We do not recognize you. And so, by the grace of God, we shall be forgiven. Amen. Now, if you are interrupted and I don't believe anyone will ever be interrupted, because to interrupt a prayer in a temple designed for such an event is a supreme ecclesiastical dishonor, and the prosecutor's opening address is never interrupted, nor is their closing address interrupted. But if you are interrupted, you merely have to say, order, 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 for the first time. Is it your intent to pervert the course of justice? I don't believe anyone will interrupt you. So in summary, and again, I'm sorry for the background noise, but in summary, the point about tonight is to realize that to hold ourselves in honor, to know who and what we are, to know what we're dealing with, to know the structure, true structure of the universe is crucial, is the magic bullet. And that whilst we put pieces of paper into their system, all of them are for memoriam and none of them are there as a crutch and none of them on their own really can ever be the remedy. We are the remedy against fraudism. And if you want the final point, and I know I've run over time, in their system they recognise a role and they call it the laity. They call it the laity. And when you look at the words of laity in their system, and I'll quickly read it out, a couple of things. The Second Vatican Council taught that the laity's specific character is secularity, i.e., as Christians who live in the life of Christ in the world, their role is to sanctify the created word world by directing to become more Christian in its structures and systems. The laity in their system is considered higher than those that are performing a role of agent. When one comes as a lay minister, knowing who and what you are, you are coming higher. You are visiting the temple and you are considered higher. But only when you know who and what you are, only when you profess epinoia, the knowing, the knowledge. So we've covered a lot. It's a bit hard with the noise in the background, so I'm going to wrap up now. But I hope some of these things 
help contribute to all of your understanding, all of your knowledge, and that we realize that the war is over and that the key is and always is to hold ourselves honorably as executors, knowing who and what we are. So thanks, and um, I answer the uh, answer question. Thanks very much. That was great, Frank. Thank you. Thank you for a, a really good... Uh, uh, I think that just supports everything, and, and I know everyone appreciates what you've covered tonight. I'm going to start with a question because you were just speaking about voice, just real quick, uh, that was near the end of the uh, chat question. Um, regarding void, so uh, the question is, should we ever void anything ever? So basically they're saying, so we shouldn't void anything ever, like checks or or uh, any document or anything like that? Um. Well, I, I think, you know, based on what we said about um, what the process is as a ritual, it really depends on, on why you want to avoid something in the first place. So, uh, effectively, if you want to avoid something in their system, uh, it has to be vocalised. It has to be witnessed. And in, in, their, in their belief, it has to be in the appropriate forum. So that's, that's really the, the answer to, to avoiding. So it's a question of why you want to avoid something. And if you do... Uh, remember that the word is a is a vocalization. It's a it's a command. It's a spoken uh, command witnessed by others uh, in an act of atonement that ultimately is voiding. Well, very good. All right. Uh, just as a reminder to the callers, um, if you press star eight to get in the question and answer queue, uh, we'll get to your questions in the order that you. Raise your hand, so to speak, using the star A, and then you will be unmuted. Um, all right, next question from the chat, Frank. Um, when you speak of the dark side, would you be speaking of the Black Brotherhood, or of whom are you speaking? I'm sorry, I have to. Can you repeat that, just because of the background noise? Can, what's sorry. the question again? Sorry. When when you speak of the dark side early on, and when, when you were speaking when you got started. Uh, when you speak of the dark side, would you be speaking of the Black Brotherhood, or of whom are you speaking? No. Uh, well, the dark side comes, of course, as, a, as most uh, most popularly comes from Star Wars. Uh, dark side, I mean those that are um, into the occult, those that are into um, rituals and necromancy and the kind of uh, stuff that we're dealing with when we uncover the real meaning of baptism. Very good. Okay, uh, next question. Is the Wilberforce parliamentary debate that proved slavery just evolved to include all of us? Uh, is that posted on any of your sites? It's located in a number of chats. It's located on David Icke, and we haven't we have an article under Ecclesiastical Deed Poll about slavery, but the historical references and parliamentary debates are not located there. So what I would say is, this is something that needs to be um, made available, and there needs to be a downloadable document with that kind of research attached to it. So it's not there yet, no, but I will make a point of making sure that. There's something there that you can download from the sites uh, that makes all that references easy to see. So again, I'm sorry. What I will say is I'll ask Gerald on, on, on the University of Eucadia, and it probably is already there, but see if we can get that up on a University of Eucadia as a reference. It may already be there, and uh, if Gerald can let me know, we'll, we'll see where to go, okay? Great. Thank you, Frank. All right. Um, can you bring charges, or can they bring charges? They, the the uh, perpetrators, or that are bringing charges against the people, can they bring charges upon the real flesh and blood people with honourable standing, or just their body corporate? It's all based on person, all of it. Uh, but the problem is, uh, we're dealing with such a dumbed-down system that the judge 
or not to say that all judges, but certainly many judges, certainly all prosecutors, and certainly almost every single attorney actually believe that person is a natural person and that a natural person means the uh, flesh and blood. They truly mean that. They, they, do, they truly believe that person, from the Latin persona, which means actor, attribute, actually is your body, as if you've got your name tattooed on your body. Well, you might have your name tattooed on your body, but most people, I don't think, have their name tattooed on their body. Uh, so uh, the person is not the body, but their mind is obsessed with that. So the, the bottom line is, no, uh, they can't nor can you bring charges against the flesh and blood, but it only works because of this ignorance. Now, if you get to a high enough court and you highlight this, there's been many successes by saying, um, uh, I am not here as surety to your fictitious person. But if you inquire, you'll find that, of course, because of the ignorance, and ignorance in this case becomes a very important tool for the system, because of that ignorance, those kind of arguments ultimately fall on deaf ears, which is why we don't talk much about it, because it is... Um, uh, it, it is a remedy that, that uh, really depends on the intelligence of the judge. In many cases, they truly believe that your flesh and blood is a person. Well, because uh, well, they're twisters of words uh, as well. So uh, another word that can describe the, uh, or uh, inscribe the person besides actor would be character. Is that right, Frank? That's right. And in fact, some of the submissions in many jurisdictions, they actually uh, describe uh, the characters and they describe people um, in a court case as characters. They actually do describe it in Latin. Yep. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you for that. Um, there is a request for you to address international travel under Eucadia. Uh, if that is uh, there has been anything done in regards to that? We haven't we haven't pursued that, and the reason we haven't pursued that is that uh, international travel uh, is itself a conveyance of property. It's a private conveyance between trusts. Uh, it involves private systems, and so there is more to it than meets the eye. Because of that, it is problematic to step up and start introducing such things as passports and other things because in their system, they control both the exit port and the entry port through their private system. And once you start trying to get recognition, then effectively you are entering into commerce and tacit agreement of their superior standing. It, there are a lot, a lot of issues with it. It's not as simple as it sounds. I wish it was, but it's not. Because we're focusing on the currency process, we're focusing on the completion of the canons, and the reason the canons have not been, uh, you know, the latest books have not been published is because of all the research that's been going on under Ministry of Law. So uh, thankfully the machine outside <laughs> turned off for a second. Uh, because of that, we haven't pursued it. So I can't give you an honest date of when we will have something because there's more to it but I hope I've explained the reasons why it has not been a, a something we've jumped into Alright, thank you Frank. Alright, we'll get to the caller on the phone. We have Connecticut here um, Connecticut, are you there? Hello? Yes. yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering, when you were talking about saying that prayer in court, what what does that really ensure me after I say that prayer? What what the prayer does, it does several things. Firstly, uh, the first thing about the prayer of atonement is that uh, it the first line saying we the tribunal says that that you are standing there as a tribunal. Okay, against a 
an acting judge, not as a tribunal. So that